guys. Um, happy Valentine's Day. Um, this is a video about my graduation and what I did that year. So, like I said, after I finished rehab, um, I was 17. I up and I went to Pennsylvania for the first time to visit my mom because she had just moved there. So I finished two week rehab uh, outpatient. And I just spent that summer just smoking weed, just chilling at the house. I, I bought the boondocks for the first time. Like, it went by really fast. And I came back to Nashville at the end of the summer to live with my dad's mom to finish high school. I went to this mall school, um, the school at the mall where you do everything online. And it's super easy. Monday through Friday. Um... The kids there were really nice. The teacher was really nice. And pretty much like every course, you just, uh, you could write, you could look up the answers on, um, on the internet and every course had, had, uh, you go through like 10 lessons and you re recorded all the, in a notebook. And then at the end of the lesson, it would be the same questions that were in the course. And you just go through your notebook and that's how you pass the course. So... I did that, and I would, I would go swimming after school at my mom's mom's condo, like, every other day. Like, I would go swimming. It was, like, really nice that summer, and um, I got in shape. I got really healthy. Like, I, I went on this diet where I was just eating fruits and vegetables. This is when I found out um, I had herpes. So, yeah, I got tested that summer. I found out I had gotten herpes from the same guy that I did meth with the last time that I had to go to rehab for. So I was pretty upset about it, but I didn't let it take over my life. So I had to tell everybody I had herpes, which that that wasn't fun. But yeah, so I went on this diet. There was a diet you could go on to try to get rid of it. I mean, it wouldn't get rid of it, but it ended up helping me get in shape anyways. So yeah, my 18th birthday, September 16th, um, uh, this guy that I was seeing, well, I wasn't like dating him, but we were friends. Um, he was like 20 something, but he threw me a big party and yeah, my 18th birthday, I was, that was the first, I went the first night I went, well, not the first time I stayed out with a guy, but like the first time it was cool with my dad's side of the family in Nashville. Cause that, that wasn't my cousin. Cause I mean, I used to go to my cousin's house and tell them that I was just staying there and then we would go out and party, but now I could do whatever I wanted. So I went and stayed at his house, and we partied there for, like, three days, and I I got drunk, and I met this girl named Judy. Uh, she was friends with him, and uh, one of those nights, like, we all got drunk, and we had, like, it was me, her, him, and this other guy, and we had, like, a foursome, and I remember I blacked out and puked out everywhere, that sucked. My grandma, um, I had her pick me up the next day to take me at work. Oh yeah, I got a job sometime around that time. I, I had gotten a job at, uh, Fazoli's. Um, so yeah, I was going to, uh, I was going to live at my grandma's and just be going out and partying and working. And, uh, I still had, I still had like a couple, I had like a month of school left. So I was supposed to graduate in October. So, Sometime around that time, um, Judy, the girl I just met, she threw a party, and so I went to that party, and then my old friend from high school, uh, this guy, this mixed guy, is really cute, um, he was there, and we all took Xanax and blacked out, and I just, I woke up the next morning with him, like, naked, like, lying with him, so I guess we had hooked up, and, um, that morning... So I woke up to her screaming at her boyfriend and I was still like fucked up. I was laying with this guy and I just remember just yelling at her. I said, shut up. And I was still really high. Like, you know, I was in her house and I shouldn't have done that. So she didn't tell me to get the fuck out. So as I was leaving, I was like, oh yeah, I need to go get my clothes. So I tried to go get my clothes and she like comes to the front door and she's like, uh-uh. She's like, no. And then she had she had my shirt in her hand and she was like, this is my shirt. And I was like, no, it's my shirt. I tried to take it to her, from her. She punched me in the face. I fell to the ground. She whooped my ass. So 
which I don't blame her because I shouldn't have been yelling at her in her house. That was the first fight I ever got in. So the guy that I was with that night, he came out there. He's like, it's fine. Like, we're going to go to my house. Like, you can move in with me. So I started dating him. I went to his house that day, me and him. And we just, I moved in right away. We started dating. I think the same day or the day after I came and got all my clothes from my grandma's house. This is the first time I moved out with somebody. So me and him, uh, he worked at Burger King. I was working at Fazoli's. Um, his mom was really cool. I got along good with them. And so I was going to work and I was finishing up school and uh, I finished up really quickly. And um, I don't know, shortly like after I was dating, like, uh, like I had a couple weeks of school left. It was like a couple weeks after we were dating and I, it was like I had a couple weeks of school left and <laughs> this is when I got back into the meth so and I got him into meth he had never done it but I had him do it um we as we started hanging out with one of my old friend one of my old friends came over and he had the meth connection so I had him get us meth and we started smoking every day and I was uh cleaning the house like rapid like we were just like the days were going by and like all we were doing was smoking, and he ended up selling his grandfather's tools to get more meth, and I, I was spending all my money on the meth, and we were going to parties, and we started having problems because, okay, the girl that was making the meth, she was coming over with my friend, and I started to get paranoid. I thought that he was cheating. Like, I felt left out. Like, I thought he was cheating on me with her, and uh, so I started going out with other guys, and I was just all about the meth. I didn't really care about us anymore. And even I ended up, uh, my the day that I graduated, I didn't go to my graduation. I still got my diploma, but I didn't go to my graduation because I was too high. And I was just like locked myself up in the house with him. And um, yeah, but I was still working. And I don't know, one of those, one of those days, like, I got acid from one of my friends, and I, I brought me and him some acid, we took some acid, I got there, and the girl and my friend was over there, they were cooking meth, and I was tripping, and I was trying to watch her, but I got super paranoid it was gonna explode, because, like, a couple of years earlier, I had, I had been in a meth explosion, I got burned, like, luckily, I think it was in one of my videos. Luckily, I didn't get hurt, like, bad, like, it was just, like, a couple of small burns, one on my ankle, one on my arm, that was in one of my videos but yeah so like I was tripping I was super paranoid that I was gonna die so I just went in and just like went in our room and just like so I started like isolating myself from the group and I was really mad and like after that day that was when I really was sure that something was going on between them two and they weren't telling me and I was mad and all I cared about was the meth and so that went on for like a month um and my my mom came down to visit for christmas and she was like why don't you just come up there with me like um she like i told her that we weren't getting along and i just gave up on the relationship so i broke up with him on christmas which i i don't know what would have happened if i would have stayed like i think he ended up getting in trouble later with the law so that's a good thing that I wasn't there for that but it was sad like he was a really good guy um I don't know it was just kind of heartless like for me to do that but yeah so I left him and I went back to Pennsylvania and this is right after I turned 18 to live with my mom and she worked at this deli right down the street from my house so pretty much like two days after I moved in with her I started working with her at this deli and it was like my first serving job so it was in the rich neighborhood so like she made like over a hundred dollars every day at least a hundred I was making at least 50 every day I was working a lot and for six months I was just working with her and meeting people off of tinder I must have met at least 30 guys off of tinder no fucking joke like I was going on Tinder all the time. Luckily, like, there was some weird people, <laughs> some crazy people. But I was just smoking weed. I spent... Okay, so I ended up um, 
looking online on this other dating website to try to find some meth. So this was like two months, two or three months after me being there. And I found a meth connection like an hour away. So I had one of my Tinder dates, one of my friends that I was seeing take, he took me uh, all the way out like an hour away. And sure enough, the guy was legit. He really had meth. So I started buying like large qual like grams at a time, like an eight ball, like and I was spending all my money. I must have spent a couple thousand dollars just on meth over the next few months. I was just doing meth pretty heavily for like three months. I was doing acid. Um, yeah. And this is when like a couple months after me doing meth, things started to go downhill. Um, I started going crazy. I started getting paranoid. And, like, at first it helped me at work. It helped me get all my shit done. Like, it helped me do a better job. But then I started getting depressed. And my heart, I started having a heart problem, like, uh, chest pains. And, like, me and my mom weren't getting along because I was just going out all the time. And I started missing work a couple times. And, like, I was obsessed. There was this old man at my work. Um, I was obsessed with him. He had a wife and everything. And I was just, like, it was like a movie. Like, it was, like... Uh, um American beauty kind of like I was obsessed with this old guy and like it was not healthy it was not healthy like so I started um so there was this new kid at work I, I, I started dating him to get my mind off of the the old man at work that had a wife because I don't know it was just awkward like um so yeah so I started dating this new kid at work for like a week we were dating and I told him about my addiction and he was like uh, I don't know, one night at a party, like, I kind of just had a meltdown, I was just bawling, crying, like, um, I was upset about something, like, I don't know, I was just depressed as fuck, so, um, and I was still seeing a bunch of different guys, like, I wasn't really gonna commit to him, so, like, literally, like, the day after that party where, like, I got really drunk with all these people I didn't know and I had, like, this meltdown and I, just, I shared all this personal information about me, like, everything that was wrong with my life and I just really regretted that. So, um, a couple of days after that, I, I went, like, really, like, into Philly somewhere because, like, we were, uh, we live, like, 30 minutes away from Philly. So, I went to some... some somewhere in Philly with this guy uh, on Tinder and I stayed the night at his house and I was doing meth at his house I was pretty much just like we hooked up and then like he went to sleep and I was just up doing meth and I started playing his guitar and like started braiding my hair and shit and he called me a lift the next morning to go to work because I have work that morning and so my lift driver as soon as I got in the car it was I looked at my Lyft driver's eyes and like I was staring at him and like I had I'd never seen anybody that attractive before and like as soon as I looked at him like I just knew like this is it this is the man that I want I want in my life like I was super high I think you could tell I was high but yeah he was like he was like his Hispanic guy he had this tattoo on his neck he had like the most beautiful face ever I asked him, well, there was this, uh, there was, like, this dyke girl that was in the backseat with me. She was getting a ride, too, and she was, like, she was, like, whispering to me. She was, like, he's driving crazy. Like, I don't like the way he was driving and shit. So, after she got out of the car, he, like, we ended up talking about it. He was, like, oh, well, I don't know what her problem was, but, yeah, so he brought me back to my house. Like, it was in, in, in the nice neighborhood and shit, and I got his number. I was so excited. I was so fucking excited. I got his number. And I had never been that excited to get someone's number. I had never been asked out by someone like that. Like, I just liked the way he talked. I liked, I liked his style, everything. So I found out he was 36. He told me right off the bat that he um, he had only been out of prison for a few years. Like, he was did prison for 15 years and shit. Like, I should have seen that as a red flag. But I was just too, like, I was too overtaken by his beauty so uh um his name i'm not gonna say his name i'll just call him lex uh that's his nickname lex um 
So yeah, I went to work that day. I was super high. I ended up getting, I told one of my coworkers that I was a meth head and like, he could tell I was high that day. He got, he like went off on me. We got in an argument. I can't remember what happened. Like I was mad. I was trying to do my best at work and he could tell I was high. He was like, you need to stop getting distracted by shiny things. I know what you're doing out there. Like you're just looking for the wrong thing, love in the wrong places. And so like I got emotional and I left work. I quit my job that day. As soon as I left, I'm like, I texted the Lyft driver. I was like, do you want to go out? Like, yeah. So he, uh, he, we made plans the next day for him to come get me the next day. Like I got in a fight with my mom that night. Um, I was like, this is all this shit happened. Like, I'm just fucked up. I just don't want to be here no more. So he came and got me the next night and he took me to this beautiful garden in Philly and I had this meth on me and like uh he he was a stoner he had he had some weed we went and we went to this park and we got in the hammock and like he held my hand and it was like I had never felt this way before like so this is like my first like serious serious relationship for real like that night so yeah my hand our hands perfectly fit together and we kissed and it was the best kiss I've ever had like I don't know my heart was just like fluttering like so yeah so uh he was like what do you want to do so I was like I want to go back to your house like he's like we could go somewhere you could come to my house so I uh, said, so take me to your house. And he lived in the hood. I had never been in the hood before, like the hood of Philadelphia. So it was these row houses and like, uh, he took me there and he had like this big pit bull that was really intimidating. I was like, I was really scared at first, but he turned out to be really sweet. Like he was like the sweetest dog ever. And like, he introduced me to his sister. He had this sister, she was a dyke. She was like this dyke lady. She was pretty cool. He introduced me to her and then we went up to his room and I was like, is it all right if I smoke here? He was like, yeah. So I smoked. We just ended up talking that night, talking all night. He was like, I want you to be my girl. Like, I want you. This, you my name's Tara. He was like, you can make this your territory. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I was like, fuck yeah. Like, I got nothing better going on in my life. Let me move in. So we talked all night. I ended up crying that night. I told him like, all this stuff about me that I'd never told anyone before and he just like he just like held my hand and we just laid there and made out and like I was crying because it was like I could tell this is my soulmate I could tell like things would never be the same after this so the next morning he took me to my mom's house to get all my stuff and she was like wow like what the fuck and she met him she was like wow like <laughs> are you sure you want to go with this guy he's too old for you but yeah um was like yeah <laughs> so he's 36 I'm 18 um yeah so I moved in with him and I had never had a guy like be that that cared that much like he was super possessive over me he was like he, he had my phone he was like you can't talk to nobody else like he treated me like he really loved me like right away like and he, we went to his aunt's house like every other day and she was really nice like he had a big family like they were really close and like she she would make these like soups and we have soup we played dominoes and they were drinking and I, I don't know I just felt it was different it was different like I felt accepted by his family he spoke Spanish like I love it when he spoke Spanish it was really cool he, he told me all about like all the shit he went through uh going to prison and everything and he wasn't working but at the time like he was scrapping like scrapping metal to uh to pay rent so he got me into that like so we had to like we had I, I don't know I never thought I would do anything like that but so, yeah so like he took me to do scrap metal with him and we did that a couple times that summer just like we only had to go like twice like but like that whole summer, it was, like, all about us. Like, he, like, pretty much, like, put everything to the side. Like, every day. He would, like, we were... I had never, like, done everything with someone. I mean, like, to the bathroom. Like, he had me cooking dinner. He taught me how to cook. I had never cooked before. He taught me how to cook. Like, that was so fun. I had someone to cook for. I had someone to take care of. We took care of each other. Like, we... 
we like had sex every day we were super close like we watched movies like he's he's from new york he took me to new york for the first time he showed me manhattan he he took me out all the time like he took me fishing um he got me off of meth he was like i don't want you doing meth like and i that was the first time that i wanted to quit and i was happy so like we were together we got to we got together june it was either june 16th or june 18th and his birthday was fourth of july he's a cancer i'm a virgo so yeah um we were to i stayed with him until october around october and like literally like all we did was just like just like spend time together every single day um all day every day all day we were never separate um and um, we were getting we were paying the rent with catalytic converters and shit i know i'm getting a job for like i got a job for like a month at this restaurant like down the street and i ended up i ended up quitting i don't remember why but yeah he was like you don't have to work anymore like i was gonna try to but i was only making five dollars an hour that was the thing they were they were only paying me five dollars an hour I don't remember what some drama happened. He was like, I just don't trust it. Like, I don't trust that you'll be in there. Like, I don't want anything to happen. I don't want any other guys to come into your life. Or, uh, yeah. So I quit and <laughs> I played a prank on that because I don't know. Like, I don't know why I did that. Like, I I had his sister order all this food that wasn't real and shit because I don't remember why I was mad at them, but. That was some pointless drama. But anyways, yeah. Sometime around October, my grand my great grandfather had a stroke and my mom was like, You need to be with the family. Like, why don't you I don't know. We started having arguments. Yeah, we got in an argument one of those sometime around that time and he broke my phone and I was really mad. So like I like I ran away and I went back to my mom's house and then she was like, you need to leave him. Like, I don't have a, f- a good feeling about this guy. And so, but I didn't listen to her. I went back and uh, we were, I don't know. He I, he was just super controlling. Like, just every, everything. Like, I don't know. It was like we were playing, like, these weird mind games with each other. Like, he acted like he didn't want me to dress up and wear makeup and stuff, but he really did. And, like, I would still do it. And, like, he would act different when I did that. But, like, I don't know. I'd never been with a man like that before. But, yeah. um, I don't know. But I ended up getting in, in really good shape. Like, I lost a lot of weight. Like, I started exercising vigorously when I was with him and like I got in really good shape with him like he brought my confidence way up like I even started to look like him this is like being with him and so but yeah my grandfather had the stroke and I was like I think I'm gonna go back to Tennessee and he was like I don't want you to go like what the fuck like no you're not leaving me but I was mad that he wasn't listening about my grandfather and shit I felt like he didn't care so like I ended up, I had to, like, one day, okay, so I was, like, the day that I was, like, I'm going, I'm going with my mom, I'm coming back, though, I promise I'm coming back, he was, like, I don't believe you, and because the way that he acted about it, like, I I was mad, and, um, like, I remember, like, I grabbed my purse, and I'm walking down the stairs, he snatched the purse out of my hand, and he was, like, he pushed me against the wall, he's, like, you're not going nowhere, I was like, yeah. So I ran. Uh, I ended up breaking away. I ran outside, and I was just yelling. We were yelling at each other. I was like, "You're the worst boyfriend ever." Blah blah. blah. My mom sent me an Uber there, but like before I left, he was like, "Come back, come back." He was like, "Just come back, please. Like, we'll stay together. Like, I understand. Just go ahead and go." But so we made out, and my mom like watched us make out on the steps, and she cried because she wanted me to leave him. But yeah, so I I came back to Nashville uh, the next couple of days and I was going to just like, OK, so I told my family was like, you're not going back there. Like, you're going to stay here. Fuck that guy. He's too old for you. He's bad news. He's a thug, all this stuff. Yeah, so um, I wasn't talking to my dad's side of the family at the time. There was some drama going on. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to get into it. Um, Yeah. So I was just staying with my mom's mom. I was like, okay. Uh, So I blocked him. 
all, a bunch of my stuff was still there and shit. And like, I, I don't know, like I was really conflicted. I was like, do I stay here? Do I try to come back? So, uh, my granddad turned out to be okay. So that was good. So like, I don't know, I changed, like, I was still, like, I was still in love with him, like, I couldn't, I, like, I was not over him, and, like, my family, I told them, I lied to them, and told them that I had no plans of going back, and I was gonna stay, but I knew I wanted to go back, but I ended up getting a job at Little Caesars, and this was, like, October, so for, like, two months, well, October, November, December, I was just staying at my grandma's, going, and working at Little Caesars, and I got back into the meth, again, really heavily, like real heavy and uh so I ignored him for like two months and then I started I started talking to him in November and I was like I'm so sorry uh I lied to you my family just doesn't want me to go back they want me here I don't know what to do so he was like I'm coming down there I'm gonna come down there you can sneak and uh you can sneak away and come see me so he ended up coming down here and I got in an argument with him while he was here. I, like I decided not to, I decided because my grandma found out, she found out that he was coming and she was like, if you leave, you're going to get kicked out. And I was scared. Like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I could trust him to leave. I didn't know if I could trust him to take care of me and give me, make sure I had a home. I didn't know how, if he was serious or not. So, um, I didn't end up seeing him, but like I saw all these pictures on Facebook he, and videos that he was hanging out with my best friend. So he came down here and hung out with my best friend and her boyfriend. They got a hotel together and post all these videos. And I was super mad at her. Like I went off on her. I was like, we're done. Like, I can't believe you're going to see this guy, my, my fucking boyfriend. Like, uh, and like at the time, like, I didn't know, I didn't trust him. Like, I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I had him come down here and then I didn't see him like that was fucked up so yeah um so I got into the meth heavily all this uh, he left and then like saw there was like a month left I was still doing meth and trying to work and um I don't know shit was just going crazy like so some drama ended up happening um my friend so um yeah, I was I was staying I started, stayed with my homeless friend that the same guy that um the same guy from the year before that came over with my best that brought the meth connect over that I was uh, his friend that I was paranoid about my ex cheating with I started hanging out with him again and um we were doing meth and he introduced me to this girl and like all this drama happened like I started hanging out with this girl that he introduced me to and she was a prostitute and I ended up ha having one of her clients like give me all this her one of her clients like took me on a date and he took me out to the country to get some meth and um he gave me all this money for free he gave me like a hundred dollars for free like we didn't do anything and shit but she swore that we did and I asked her I asked her if we could go out before I went out with him and she said yeah and then after we did she went off on me and she was like fuck she was like pretty much like I want to beat your ass like fuck you bitch so uh I don't know something happened like something happened um oh yeah I went to go I went to I was I stayed with him at this he was staying at this car lot that he worked at and like a couple days later his boss, his boss that he was working for at the car lot came into my job and was like, uh, I just had $300 stole from me. I know that you stayed with him in the car lot. Do you have anything to do with it? And like, um, he was like, can you give me his real name? And I was so paranoid that, that this stolen money was going to come back on me that I gave, I gave his boss his name. And I should have never, as soon as I did that, I was like, what the fuck did I do? That's my friend. Like, why did I do that? But yeah, um, so all this drama happened. He ended up having to run away. He had to leave the state because the police were going to come after him for this stolen money. And it was, I gave his name to his boss. I did it in front of all my coworkers. I was like, this is his name. And I was like, fuck, now I'm a snitch. Like, why did I do that? Like, I still regret that so bad. <sighs> but I mean, I was high and I was just like, I was like, I didn't want to go to jail. I thought this money and I, and I didn't steal the money. And so like, I was like, I'm not going to have this come back on me. What the fuck? And plus he took that, he took that girl's side and they, they were pretty much just being rude to me. And 
Like, it was bullshit. So, after he disappeared, uh, I started hearing all these voices in my head saying, like, this uh, this guy is going to die because of you. Like, now the police are after him. He might have to spend the rest of his life in jail because of you. And, like, all his friends were mad at me. And I was just, like, doing meth. And I was super paranoid. And I was, like, I don't know. I thought I thought the cartel, I thought, I thought that his family was involved with the cartel. And they were going to come after me because I had given his name up. Um, so yeah, so, uh, around Christmas time, my mom came down there to visit. And, um, so I started talking to my ex again. I'm like, I messaged him. I'm like, I fucking miss you. Like all this shit's going on. I don't know what to do. I was like, me and my grandma aren't getting along. Uh, I'm going crazy. Like, I think my stepdad works for the CIA. At the time, I didn't understand what the CIA was. I didn't know anything. Like, but I was getting these messages on my phone that people were watching me and I thought the cartel was coming after me. And I'm like, he's like, all right, I'm going to send you a bus ticket. Why don't you come back? So, so yeah, uh, he sent me the bus ticket two days after Christmas. I had like a little bit of mess and like, I just packed my shit. My dad took me to the bus station and I came back to Philadelphia and my next video will be all about this whole year of me and him together for a year and all the crazy shit that happened while we were together after I went to Philadelphia.